It's been exactly 60 years since the election of St. Pope Paul VI. On June the 21st, 1963, Montini ascended to the pontificate. He was known for his gentle and reserved demeanor, accompanied by profound erudition and a strong connection to his spiritual life. In his tenure, he skillfully carried forward the progressive path set by John XXIII, ensuring the fruitful progress of the Second Vatican Council. Pope Paul VI was born Giovanni Battista Montini, the second of three children, here in the small city of Concesio. His father, Giorgio Montini, was a lawyer, member of the Italian Chamber of Deputies and political editor of the Catholic paper Il Cittadino di Brescia. His mother, Giuditta Alghisi, was a member of the local noble families and president of the Brescia chapter of Women's Catholic Action. Giovanni Battista grew up in the faith, and both parents, his mother especially, imbued the children with a love of literature, art, music, philosophy, and political life. Fausto Montini is the son of Ludovico Montini, the elder brother of Giovanni Battista. Fausto says that the two brothers were very close and that his uncle Giovanni Battista was a frequent guest at their house. My uncle had a very subtle capacity for irony. He was always ready to pick up on the funniest things, always cheerfully and politely, with what you could define as an English sense of humor. He didn't like expensive cassocks, and he would often say at home when speaking of homilies that a five-minute one was for the soul, a ten-minute one was for the preacher, and that a homily lasting a quarter of an hour was for the devil. That's the kind of person he was. Giovanni Battista Montini was ordained a priest on May the 29th, 1920. After further studies in Rome, he began working in the Holy See Secretariat of State and eventually became a trusted assistant to Cardinal Eugenio Pacelli, the future Pope Pius XII. During the terrible years of World War II, Monsignor Montini helped lead refugee and relief efforts, as well as helping save Jews from death in the gas chambers. In November of 1954, Montini was appointed as Archbishop of Milan and named a cardinal in 1958 by Pope John XXIII. During the conclave in 1963, he was elected Roman Pontiff. As Pope, Paul finished the work of the Second Vatican Council and then devoted the next years to the colossal task of implementing its many reforms in the middle of immense social and political upheaval and during the storm of the sexual revolution. Certainly this was the encyclical that made Paul VI suffer the most. I believe that one of the difficulties in the drafting of this document, now that we have clearer information about it, thanks to the opening of the archives, was that he was reaffirming the teaching of the church and openness to life. But, and at the same time, he was enhancing the family context in human and anthropological terms. Already in 1968, when the encyclical came out, he understood that this context of openness to human life needed to be defended from the theological invasion that ultimately takes away the value and human dimension from the act of procreation. All of those warnings have come true, just like his predictions that the modern world would be plagued by atheism, secularism, and materialism. He had taken the name Paul to embody his desire to be a pilgrim to all nations, and his papacy was noted for its then unprecedented travels. In 1965, he became the first pope to visit the United States. In a famous speech before the United Nations General Assembly in New York, he called on the world, no more war, war never again. Throughout his last years, he defended the true teachings of the council and the church's teachings on human sexuality marriage, and human dignity. The Pope was saddened by the rejection of Humanae Vitae by so many Catholics and even priests and theologians, and he prophetically warned the world about the future consequences of a contraceptive culture. Pope Paul VI died at Castel Gandolfo on August the 6th, 1978. Pope, priest, and prophet, the teachings of Pope Paul VI have echoed across the pontificates of his successors, John Paul I, St. John Paul II, Benedict XVI, and Francis.